if you've ever played a video game, you have probably played a game that was designed by or at least produced by Shigeru Miyamoto. He is, quite simply, the greatest and most influential video game designer who ever lived. Now, to some degree, he's been mythologized over the decades, and his name is now, like, tangentially attached to a lot of games he hardly had anything to do with. But basically, anything his bosses at Nintendo think has legs gets his name on it now. But he earned his way to that mythical status with games like Donkey Kong, Super Mario Brothers, and The Legend of Zelda. Also, Donkey Kong Jr., Popeye, Mario Brothers, Excite Bike, Duck Hunt, Hogan Sally's, just like so many great fucking games. But anyway, so in 1984, just as he's coming into his own as a game designer, he's tasked with taking on the flagging genre of maze games. Now, specifically, Nintendo wants their own take on the perennially popular Pac Man. So he works his magic on the concept and comes up with a truly original game. It, its core mechanic is still like, you know, maze full of shit you have to eat, but the maze is larger than the screen, so you have to scroll around a little bit. There's a, these big rolling obstacles that cut off portions of it here and there, and you need certain power ups to do basic shit. But despite the unrivaled success of Miyamoto's games and the fact that the game was super fucking fun, it was never released in the United States. Even at the height of the Nintendo Entertainment System's popularity, when 30% of American households had one and you could sell 100,000 copies of a 7-Up ad if you called it a Nintendo game, they sat on a game from their very best designer that was already formatted for the medium. So why keep this masterpiece unreleased? Well, it's called Devil's World. And that would already be a problem, but like in the game, you play this cutesy little dragon who's literally fighting Satan in hell. And the power-ups you pick up along the way are little Bibles and crucifixes. And as soon as Nintendo of America's Americans saw it, they were like, dude, you got to be fucking kidding me. And it was buried a thousand feet in the earth below concrete because the last thing a burgeoning company could afford to do in the 1980s was piss off Christians. Right? They'd shut you down quicker than anything. And when I say shut you down, I'm talking the 80s version of shut you down. Right? I'm talking pre-internet. If you want to buy something, you need to find a store that sells at levels of shutdown. Like in the town I lived in, if like if you were curious about neo-paganism, for example, you were just shit out of luck. There was nothing about it in the library. Not only did the bookstores refuse to sell it, they wouldn't even order it for you if you asked. And none of the video stores would rent documentaries about it or anything like that. And all of those owners of those establishments, they weren't all Christian zealots. They just knew better than to piss off the Christian zealots. Right, because those motherfuckers would boycott your business. They'd lean on elected officials to revoke your business license, lean on your landlord, harass your customers, whatever they had to do to enforce their standards of acceptability. Now, we fast forward 40 years and the Internet has largely taken that away from them. The most fascist regime in the world couldn't lock down information as effectively as the churches in Waycross, Georgia could back in 1990. If the local stores won't sell a thing, you just order it online. What's more, they blew their wad bitching about rock lyrics and Teletubbies and not even the public relations firms give a shit anymore about their boycotts. And now that they've been rendered impotent from that mode of enforcement, of course, they've declared it to be the height of injustice and call it cancel culture. But you motherfuckers invented cancel culture. Hell, you'd gotten so goddamn good at it that Nintendo pre-canceled its best designer, as did virtually every other company in the goddamn country. Right? But you abused your power. And now when Million Moms complains about the H-E double hockey sticks in a Burger King ad, the shareholders pat the advertiser on the back. Right? Because being condemned by Christians is a badge of honor if you're trying to sell shit to anybody under the age of 50. Of course, the method was never bad. It was just that the target was bad. And now the very people that they were trying to shut up have picked up the weapon that they themselves forged and were slowly learning how to wield it. I mean, we're not pointing it at the LGBTQ community. Of course, we're handing it to the LGBTQ community. We're handing it back to the very groups that have been marginalized by it for all these years. And the more effective we get at it, the more willing they are to pretend that the very concept is egregious. But don't let it fool you for a second. The instant that pendulum swings the other way, they would seize the power back and cancel any cartoon with a fucking wizard in it. They've never been against cancel culture. They're just against the good guys being so damn much better at it than them. 